uh, welcome to another episode of Hunting NT. As you see, we're out mud crabbing and we're gonna get throw a crab pot in this uh, creek just over here. Paul's gonna be throwing it in. Yeah, Next to the crock trap. <laughs> Just at the, the corner of that mouth. Yep. yep. Oh no. Take the sunnies off, you're gonna lose them. Yeah. Grappling pole should be beside you. Straight, straight up the tree. Oh, there. So uh, what we're doing here is um, we're going down on the incoming tide. Uh, we just left Buffalo Creek. You need 3.5 to get out of Buffalo Creek. Um, as we go down, Paul will be setting up the uh, pots and uh, you want to crab the first two hours of the tide, but we're only going to have a push for two hours because um, we have to wait till 3.5 in Buffalo Creek to get out. Uh, as you see, there's pretty good lizards around when they put traps out like that. Normally, they're just a bit smaller and they uh, go through the baits. So, if you've got any questions about crabbing or anything, just hit me up in the comments. You close to the mangroves. Okay, everyone, Paul's going to put another pot in. As we're coming down the bank, we saw a heap of uh, mud crab diggings on the side, so he's going to just drop one right here beside us. If they're digging here, that means they're hanging out here. Beautiful. In the tree. All right. To the next spot, we one of my favourite spots. As Paul's uh, baiting up, we're just using chicken drumsticks today. If you like this sort of content where I'm talking a lot more and I'm trying to be a bit more engaging to you, to the audience, because um, I, th I think I need to do a bit more talking in the videos to explain what we're doing. So this next spot's coming up. Um, it's just a really big feeder creek. So we'll be placing a pot there. I've always done well there. Um, I'm doing a lot of arms. <laughs> no problem with this creek is when it's really big tides, you can lose pots, so that's why we're throwing the floats up in the trees. Uh, the floats, normally the trees, they sort of wedge like an anchor and hang on. We've chucked her in right now, Paul. This is her ear. We throw her on the right hand side of the inside bend. It seems to not get as much current flow as <laughs> you know, the insides. So, now keep going, right. On this point, throw it in front of us. Yep, beautiful. And then I know we throw it up there and the tree right there. Oh, good, because it falls, it goes into that tree above it anyway. Um, today's tide only goes to about a 5.8, so we're, we've only got a real small push, but it's better than sitting at home. We're out crabbing instead. I head back down this way and as I do I always try to stagger me pots so I'm not putting them all in one zone like I've seen a lot of people just drop them all in one zone you want to spread them out so you'll find the crabs in the area uh, I'll click you back on in a sec we're in the new location we're going to chuck pot in here beside this little feeder creek just like so See how we're putting it up current? The current is going this way. 
This way um, the smell will go up that little feeder and hopefully wake up Big Muddy to come into the hole. And up the tree. It's hard work sending out crab port table. Yeah, well, <laughs> gotta do it. All right, we'll head down. Let me chuck one in here. Normally get plenty of crabs here if the little resident croc's not living in, in here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's a bait thief that live here, lives here sometimes. Please be Bertha. Definitely looks like one of our ropes and floats. Those look like one of your floats. It's got my name on it too. It's all wrapped up in the tree. Yeah, you just pull her up. Come on, be Bertha. Feel it, like Bertha? Bertha? We got Bertha back. Shit you, I don't tell her this. Yeah, you're right. Try to hold us in the current. Big holes in her. Crabs had to get out somewhere. Well, maybe there's family way out. Just undo that top one. This better? Yep. And then we'll flip her out and I'll pull us out in the middle of the channel now, eh? Get you away from this tree. Well, Bertha can go back in if we want to, if I restitch her. Hey, we've got one chicken leg. Yeah, yeah, we'll have a look at it. She's lucky. Might find me others, still pots too. He didn't come looking, right? Okay, but everyone, just for a bit of context, this is Bertha. She's like a um, icon to the channel. I was away in Adelaide and my mate used me pots and then he lost Bertha. I was devastated. So I've come out here and we found her. Friggin' just float in the normal tree like you'll see. Um, I don't think it's cut. No, there's, there's a couple of holes like, like there and all that, but... We'll retire her up and we're gonna use Bertha again today. So, shit yeah. We realised we only brought eight baits though, so we're um, we're only gonna have eight pots out <laughs> anyway. So, uh, I'll burn through in. It was a bit of a crash and a bang. I didn't have the GoPro on my hand, but we got it back. <laughs> I'm happy about that. I've had that pot for a long time. Oh, oh, you're a bit dirty. Uh, I'll clean these off and uh, we'll put the next pot in. Bend it. <laughs> All right, first pot. We're gonna just we've just set the other pots out, and we're gonna check this this one. Oh. And the first pot has a crab in it. Probably not legal. We'll give it a measure anyway. All right, pull. It's a male. Do you want me to unhook it? Oh, I've zip tied it on there. Yeah. Side. There's a freaking hole in this pot. That's legal. It is? Yeah. Uh, we'll chuck him in for now to see how we go. If we get any bigger ones, we'll um we'll let him go and upgrade. Trying to keep the puffer out of again. Yeah. Don't know if it's gonna be possible. Beautiful. Oh, this. Knew we had a crab in there, no one. 
see the bike was messed up. There's the little holes. I'm surprised we didn't got that guy. Just drop it right there for funny. Oh, first pot, and we've got a crab. He's not very big. Our size limits in Northern Territory are 13 centimeters for males, 14 for females. But if we get better ones than that, we'll tip him out. This way you get to see a catch and cook either way, but surely we'll get bigger ones than that. We don't know if this creek's been getting hammered or if uh, just this is just the start of a really awesome crabbing session. Alright. If you're enjoying this sort of content, please give me a thumbs up. It helps out the video and uh, leave a comment. I'd like to know where you are all from, what part, of your, what part of Australia you're in or where you are in America, wherever you are in the world, just let me know. Uh, be interesting to see uh, who's watching the videos and what countries. Uh, I'll turn this back on when we're at the next pot. Pot number four, eh? There she is there, I'm just gonna swing her up current. Don't look like the current's moving that bad, so it shouldn't be that much of an issue. Oh, there's probably lizards everywhere. <laughs> uh, pot number four, have we got any crabs? Yes, us two stonkers. Phew, look at that. The one look at the size of the claw on in. Another beauty. All right. One, two. Let's uh, release the smaller one. One sec. Oh, that's a legal crab. But when we discord them, he can go back in. Uh, pull one and then. <laughs> nice crabs. Nice and rusty colours. Oh, they'll be right like that. But uh, as you can see, that is a pretty good pot. In between that gap again. There, pull. Oh. It's just there you had it. There. All right. Yes. <laughs> now that's that is a nice haul of crabs. We'll get a bit of uh, mangroves uh, up north too. Okay, pot number six, A. Eh? Have we got four muddies? Yes, another big boy. Get a load of him. That's another nice crab. He was been in there a while. Look at the bait's ready, pretty good. Cool. All right, tip him in. Oh, he's stuck. Beautiful. Alrighty. Chugging back in. Watch that rope, it's under the seat. Yep. All right. Pot number six, that's a nice crab. I reckon he'd be still about a 17 centimeter crab. We're doing well. Not huge numbers, but quality, so. It's only the first pull as well, so we got We've probably got two good pools here, and then um, we'll probably start packing up so we can get back and uh, pick up Shane Chain. So it'll take it take about an hour to pull pull the gear down anyway. All right, I'll catch you at pot number seven. Okay. Ooh, uh, we're at Bertha, 
and uh, normally she's pretty pretty good at catching crabs so Dirty now. Right. One, two good ones. There we go. Bertha is always catching grabs. <laughs> Put my legs against the side of the pot. Um, we're already crossways, aren't we? Two right. Oh, we've got a good feed of crabs then. Oh no. Please try to get out that little hole. Yep. Swimmer's stuck. I can't. See, he's still swimming there. No, there. Snap it off the twist. There we go. Nice crab, eh? Hey. Yeah. Well, oh, it's an heavy. Shit, yeah. Yeah. Might need to get some more. Yep, yeah, chuck him straight down. Straight. Yep. Alright. Um I need some leaves. Straight above your head. That's a heavy crab. Good crab, man. Dirty. Um, all right. to the next location last pot for the first pull yes two beauties <laughs> <laughs> we got a Rambo. Later on, I'll show you and explain the difference between a Rambo and uh, just an ordinary mud crab. Uh, we got asked that in a, f a few comments ago. Don't you do that? Why? No, the Rambo attack on the big boy. You know we stick this close to you. <laughs> <laughs> He's stuck in the kindling. There we go. Uh, we'll Back, back. As you can see already, the difference between the Rambo and the normal mud crab. One's got big red nippers, pink nippers, and the other one's got green nippers. Alright, let's get out of this spot. <laughs> We're doing awesome today. Alright, port number two. Location two. Oh. Okay, this is uh yeah, pot number two or pool number two, so <laughs> we're packing them down as we go. The croc get to this one? No, but we got two big muddies. <laughs> What's that? Now we got eleven crabs, oh. eleven keepers. Yeah, that's good. Look at that. Those good crabs, mate. Just need to get that little tiny one out. I believe. Yeah. One, two. Yeah, number four.
Alrighty. How long do you reckon we've been crabbing for, Paul? About an hour and a half? An hour and a half, we've already got 11 crabs and we're pulling the pots in already. We'll know when we get back. We're allowed 20 crabs, but... What, we, what was that? Ah, uh, rock cod. Jan fish, which is not that one. We'll just let this guy go. We don't need uh, any fish right now. You don't spike yourself. Oh, that's also a good sign when the pots start becoming a little bit more empty anyway. It's the runs over anyway. So that's how I, what I believe sometimes with uh, crabbing. You have your first run of crabs coming down the creek and they're coming out to feed. All of a sudden, uh, you, do, you go run back through. So you put your pots out, you run back through them and uh, you empty them out. Then you go for your next run. If you, you're still getting crabs, keep crabbing. If you run, do a run and it starts becoming very bare, that's the end of the run and you might as well go home. Then just sitting up the creek, pulling pots in, hoping to get one. Because when the crabs are on, you shouldn't really need to crab all day to get one crab. Well, that's up here in the Northern Territory. So I don't know about Queensland. I've seen Queensland people do two, three day soaks. I've never thought your bait would last that long. Up here, our water, what's it? About 33 degrees probably the water is right now. So, it is what it is. All right, catch you at the next pot. Oh, just ram into it. Does that do anything? No, no, that's right. Don't worry about it. It's just a little stick. It's not a log. All right. What's this? Pot number five. Yes, nice crab. And a cod. Oh, that was... Fish is gonna fall out first, isn't it? Oh, all of that bait has gone. No, let me give me a sec. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Either that's 12 or 13 or some amount of crabs we've got now. <laughs> yeah. I'll give him a uh, get in there. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to pull. Okay. Yeah, port number six on the second pull for the day. We got any in it? Yes, another Rambo. I don't know how many crabs we got now. We're getting close to our limit. 20. <laughs> Alright, another Rambo. Alright. Full bait too. Down to this pot, down the end still. I think we got two in there last time. Put your head behind your pull. Alright, you're good again. Alright, pot number seven, I think it is. We're only using eight pots. We didn't realise um, a kilo of chicken only had. Just as well. Yeah, well, we got plenty anyway with eight pots.
Alright, what have we got in this one? Another good crab. If we wanted to, we could have bagged out today, but oh, whatever we've got in here, we might bag out anyway with Bertha still to go. We're going to have to call everyone around for a feast, I reckon. Oh, it's ripped too. Crocodile's been it. It's better fall out this side. They, they might have been getting out. Something's going in there though to rip that open. Yeah. Crocs, this is where crocs like to live as well. Oh, it's raining. raining. Willy weather, you need to get your shit sorted out. <laughs> Alright. I'll turn these off to try keep these dry. Okay, Bertha, very last pull for the day. She's always waiting. She's a big bitch. Uh, and we got a zero in her. Good. She got two good crabs at it. Oh. Phew. <laughs> We're back. It's a bit wet though. That bucket of crabs, you're just gonna do it. Clean the bucket, it's 18.4 kilos of crab. So I reckon we got at least 13, maybe 12 kilo of actual mud crab. Oh, let's get these out and get them taped up. That's a monster. Yeah, 